uh, it is kind of similar to Bozeman, right? Uh, I don't know, maybe the to-do is gonna be do my homework. And if I send this, you're gonna see that the status code that it is responding is 201, which is the correct one for this kind of request. Run all the requests, and there it is. Hey masters, welcome back to Drunk Media, welcome back to another excellent video. Today we're gonna try to review five amazing Visual Studio Code extensions that can be useful for you, I'm pretty sure of that. Let's start with better comments, then we're gonna review the NPM extension, then we're gonna see Thunder Client, which is a um, kind of Postman replacement in built in Visual Studio Code, you're gonna see that. We're gonna review a bit of bookmarks and then Docker, okay? So let's start with better comments, okay? I'm gonna come here and, well, I'm gonna look for better comments in the marketplace. However, if you have done, if you don't have this installed, of course, what you have to do is open Visual Studio Code, come here to the extensions part and look for better comments, okay? That's basically what you have to do. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna install it right away and well, I'm gonna start with a, a JS file, maybe, and I'm gonna start with a simple comment, okay? Um, so, now that uh, we understand and we know that sometimes comments are not necessary because the code itself has to be self-explanatory, uh, well, there are some cases that you, you may want to well, place a comment there, right? But, uh, well, that's the, the case that you may want to use this extension because you can highlight some kind of comment like this one. This is an important comment using an asterisk before or actually, um, well, at the beginning of the comment, right? Or you can, uh, well, kind of do a warning using the symbol, right? And you can say that this is a deprecated method right or let's imagine that um, maybe you want to add a to do in your list i don't know maybe you have a code and while well, you're working on it uh, in your week and you want to separate your task in, in different to do's so you can do a to do here let me show you that to do and now you can here i don't know maybe use uh, i need to learn cypress i don't know maybe to automate end-to-end -end testing okay well there is a to-do right and you can have that in your code and this is very interesting um i just wanted to mention that if you want to learn cypress in this channel you're gonna find a playlist that with a free uh, well a lot of free videos right where you can learn, learn cypress from scratch if you want to <laughs> but there is a and the last and uh, no oh, that's that's all i think that hmm Oh, I see. I, I'm, I'm missing something here. And you can add a question. Yeah, that's the, the kind of comment that I wanted to, to, to well, bring to this video. You can add a question in your code. And let's imagine that you don't know how to click in Cypress. I don't know, maybe. So you can use uh, uh, the, the, the question mark at the beginning of your comment to, well, place a comment saying how to handle this click a scenario with Cypress, I don't know, maybe, right? And, well, that's another kind of comment that may be useful when you're developing your scripts, right? I don't know, I'm just giving you some ideas and, well, some kind of use, uh, use cases to this extension, okay? Let's continue with the next one. The next one is NPM. This is very interesting. Let me show you this. Um, I'm gonna come here to my package.json, right? And you're gonna see that I, have like three different scripts here. I have an start Cypress open and Cypress end to end. If I want to run the Cyp the the start the script here, I have to come here, open the terminal, and write down npm run and the word or actually the name of the script that I want to run. So my application is going to be running after that, right? However, there is a way to simplify this without uh, writing anything. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this process. All right, I'm gonna clear my console and I'm gonna install the extension name npm. This extension is gonna uh, give you some tools in order to run 
I don't know, maybe, let me show you this, different commands like npm install, npm run a script, npm show output, and so on. Uh, you are going to have a lot of npm commands in build over here, okay? So I'm going to come here to my package.json, and I'm going to be running Control shift p in my Windows computer to, well, look for npm. And you're going to see a lot of commands here npm install dependencies, npm in start, npm terminate the script, and so on. In my case, I want to use the npm run script, okay? Now you're gonna see that in my package, the JSON, I just have three of them, and I'm gonna, I want to run the start one. So let's go ahead and do it. You're gonna see the procedure here automatically. It is gonna be looking to this particular um, directory, doing a CD, because this is window, right? And um, then I'm doing an npm run script start, and well, this is working smoothly uh, and actually doing the, the same stuff uh, as, as I did manually before, right? So this is a very interesting one. I just wanted to bring you uh, this idea to your project if, if, if it is helpful for you. In my case, I really use it. It is pretty interesting one. Let's continue with Thunder. Thunder is a um, kind of replacement for Postman. If you are already working with um, Visual Studio Code and you want to, I don't know, maybe do some requests to an API to make sure that everything is working fine or if you all also want to do some tests, you can do it over there. Let me explain you this. I have installed a Thunder client already, right? I just look for Thunder. The first option here is Thunder client. And well, now this is installed. You're going to notice that I have a new icon here in the left part of the navigation menu. And I'm going to click on that. You're going to see this tab and, and this view over here. And um, I'm not pretty sure, but probably <laughs> it is kind of similar to Bozeman, right? You can see that we have here a new request like this uh, new over here, right? We have collections as Postman over here. We have environment and I don't know, it's it's kind of similar and you're gonna see that it is actually <laughs> amazing. I'm gonna click on new request here and you're gonna see that I have kind of the same view here, right? I have query parameters, I have authorization, let me show you this. Uh, I have body here. You have body in Postman. I have tests here and on, uh, some snippets here. You're going to have a test here with some snippets. It is amazing. So let's start with um, the, the demo that I wanted to show you. I'm going to come here to my environment tab. I'm going to click on, I'm sorry, I'm going to click on new environment and I'm going to call this environment um, fake API. Okay. This fake API, if I open this, you're going to see that I can uh, kind of declare different variables and values. So the only one that I'm going to be use that I'm going to be using for now is base URL. And let me show you this because I have this uh, kind of fake API to well actually get or post to do's in a list. OK, so I'm going to get the, the URL over here. Right. And I'm going to save it in my base URL. Uh, kind of environment variable, okay? Now that I have saved this, I'm gonna just, yes, well, actually close that environment uh, kind of uh, file, right? And now, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> and now what I want to do is get the to-dos from that base URL, right Right from, from that API. I'm gonna be requesting the to-do number one in, in the to-dos, um, well, endpoint, okay? So I'm gonna copy this. Let's go ahead and do it. But uh, well, we have to specify the base URL at the beginning of this beautiful request. OK, now I'm going to be clicking on send and you're going to see that I am re I'm receiving as response the body from my to do number one. If I perform a request for the to do number two, well, it is going to be returning the ID number two and so on. It is a fake API that you can use, of course. Okay, so now that I have a simple get request, let's imagine that um, I want to make some tests here. I want to make sure that the response code is 200 because it is important to make sure that the request is working fine. The results are going to be placed here. You're going to see that the result is passed. And well, maybe I want to make sure I don't know that the headers over here uh, contains the server one. I don't know why, but maybe you want to check the header and the header name is going to be server and you want to make sure that it contains the value cloud from cloudflare okay 
So now if I send this request, you're going to see that it is working as expected. Okay. I'm going to delete the one of those get requests that I created and that's it. I'm going to save this. And now you can see that I have a, the very first request over here, but also you can uh, create another one to do a post request maybe. Okay. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to be using base URL. I'm going to be sending a uh, to do to the to do's endpoint over here. Okay. I think it's to do's. Let me check. Yeah. It's within it with an S. Okay. And well, in this case, I want to be, uh, I want to send, sorry for this. This is not what I expect to do, do, do. Let me see. Uh, it is the get, uh -huh. this is the body that I wanted to have. I'm going to be sending a post request to the to do's endpoint with this kind of body. But now, I'm going to be sending a dummy uh, to do to the to do endpoint. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the to do is going to be do my homework. And if I send this, you're going to see that the status code that it is responding is 201, which is the correct one for this kind of request. So I'm going to response code, uh, make a response code assertion to make sure that it is 201. Okay. Okay, let me show you that it is working. And maybe I want to make sure that the time response is, I don't know, maybe less than 500. Okay, so let's let's do it. Um, response time is minor than 500 milliseconds. There it is. Um, you can see that the result is working because the time over here is, well, actually 355 milliseconds. Okay, you can also create collections because sometimes we want to execute kind of collections of requests in a single execution moment, right? So I'm going to come here, I'm going to create a new collection named fake API. And you're going to see that probably if I come here and I add or save this post request to this particular collection, it is going to work. You're going to see that now we have a post request here. And the same is case for get. I'm going to add the get request over here to the fake API. And now I have the couple of the requests that I have created in this collection. So I'm going to co come here and run all the requests. And there it is. It is saying that the to do's is not, it has a, a kind of test failed and it is because of, <clears throat> of the time. I'm sorry. You can see that it is now 544 and we were expecting to be less than 500 okay so that's why it is failing in this particular case okay guys i hope that you enjoyed this please let me know in the comment section if you find this useful please subscribe but let's continue with the next extension we are not stopping here we're learning a lot today right <laughs> let's continue with the next extension the next extension is bookmarks if i'm not wrong yeah let's continue with bookmarks i'm gonna come here to the extensions marketplace and i'm gonna be looking for bookmarks um there it is let's see there it is the first one from um, alessandro fragnani it's an amazing extension to be honest sometimes you may want to actually remind some piece of codes or if you want to reference that i don't know there are some scenarios that you may want to save your code and toggle between them okay and you have a kind of quick access to it so uh, let's imagine that for some reason i want to make sure that i remember how to do a click force in cypress okay i don't know maybe and, uh, and i want to save this piece of code but uh, well in this case it is already I'm sorry for that, guys. Let me see. I'm going to do something very quick here. Bookmarks clear from all files. Now it is clear. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's imagine that I want to bookmark this part of the code. So I just have to uh, actually um, select the piece of code that you want and perform a bookmarks toggle labeled. Now you are um, able to place a name for this particular book bookmark. So it is going to be a click first in Cypress. Okay. Now you're going to see that in your code, you have a kind of bookmark in the left part of your uh, line, right? And also you're going to see that I have this particular bookmarks uh, icon at the left part of your UI. And now instead of this particular file, you're going to have this um, well, bookmark reference in your code immediately. That's amazing, guys, because, well, sometimes you, you may want to be reminded about some code, right? Uh, let's imagine that I also want to, 
well, I'll add another line to site intercept to intercept re responses. I want to toggle labeled this bookmark, and this is going to be a site intercept. And you're going to see that in the bookmarks part, well, we're going to have another. Well, we can toggle and, and switch between them, right? Um, and well, as, as I did before, you can clear different bookmarks or clear them all. So I'm going to do a, um, bookmarks here. And you're going to see that I can clear from all files or clear uh, a single one. In this case, I want to clear from all files. And you're going to see that all the bookmarks were deleted as expected right and guys i think that i have the last one which is docker okay i'm sorry <laughs> the last one is gonna be docker uh, i'm gonna come here to the extensions marketplace and i'm gonna be looking for docker okay i'm gonna install it and well basically what this docker extension does is basically that you're gonna have a kind of kind of docker interface to interact with your images, containers, volumes, networks, and so on. So for example, if you open my Docker desktop here, the, the view, right? You're gonna see that I do have this uh, Docker Compose kind of stopped so we can run it right away. Well, we have this one, uh, this view, right? It is gonna be the same. We can do a Compose Start, Compose Restart, compose down and so on. We also have some images here. Well, we're gonna be, be capable to, um, well, actually take a look of this over here. Also, we have networks, we have volumes as as, as here, right? And and so on, right? It's really interesting. Let's, let's just run this Jenkins um, container and let's see if it works but because it should. You're gonna see that you're gonna have access to the files inside of that particular Docker file. And this this is something pretty interesting and, and easy to, to check, right? You can see that I can access the bin file inside of the container and so on, right? And in case that I want to stop the, the container, I can do it just clicking on the stop, right? You're gonna see that the same stuff is happening in over here and it is actually already stopped. So guys, I, I hope that you enjoy this. This is very interesting. I hope that you let me know in the comment section what you think about these extensions and let me know in the comment section too if you have other extensions in your mind because I'm very, I'll be more than happy to create more of this kind of video. So thank you very much, guys. Uh, see you in the next one and bye-bye.